and I'm uh, interested to see if they can do it. But if Gamba can, it will be something special. They have already had themselves an amazing run through the lower bracket. First, it was Liquid. Second, it was VG. Now it's Secret. If they do want to keep moving through, I don't think anyone can say that Gambit haven't earned it. They've played terrific Dota the whole way through, but Secret, what an opponent. Such a hard opponent, too. Yeah, it's as if they level up as the tournament progresses as well. Yeah. It's the secret of the group stage. What was the panel saying? Like, if you go through the lower bracket, you learn a lesson during the group stage. It's like, yeah, we do it hard, but we do it better and better and better with every single series that goes by. And uh, they've really got a lot to play with. Like, as you said, the Warlock for Puppy, Yapsaw on this signature ES. We're not going to see any uh, Illusion Echo Slams in this game, more than likely. Yep. Don't want to jinx him already, but uh, Yapsaw is absolutely amazing on that. And this Ven has just been a great hero throughout this entire tournament. It just seems to be going from strength to strength. Pun yep. was intended. Uh, I like the, the secret lineup is cool just because you reduce the impact of Bat's low damage because you do have that Fatal Bond spread. Uh, on the side of Gambit, you have LC and Lone Druid. This is another combination the original OG used to utilize, where you can buff the bear, give it an attack speed steroid, and you just end up shredding through structures. It's going to be important that they play around this mid lane. You, Secret knows this, of course. They are the masters of making moves on the five minute catapult wave. That's what Gambit's going to look to do in the mid lane. At least that's what we can expect. Actually, watching FNG in immersion, trying to start off with a. With a heavy hitting tri lane up on the top, FNG and Immersion. They yeah. can't get a surprise, however. The Observer Ward was already planned to down, so Immersion and FNG's moves are very heavily telegraphed. That's yeah, a really nice play here from Secret. Again, we just witnessed two distinct aggro tri lanes uh, committed by EG. Secret expecting that you don't. <laughs> the enemy side doesn't want you to let Sven free, uh, free farm, so of course they're gonna contest. How do you even get that aggressive tri lane in? Like, sven has got so much life, Warlock's gonna be there to help you out too. And if you go on Puppy, Nisha's yep. just gonna storm hammer you down anyway. It's gonna they just cancel off any kind of channel you've got. Yep. So it seems very difficult to begin with. Maybe that rotation oh. towards mid, Yapsaw. Courier. It's a great fissure block the Courier. It was right on top of Yapsaw. That was the harassment in the lane, the yep. Orb of Venom being lost. That's huge, and more importantly, the regen for the Hawk, he's down to nothing. This is huge, and you can see it's already six to three. He has to send the pair back. But he can't get the Orb of Venom off the Courier. Right. It, it stays on that dead Courier. That's so much damage. It represents 15 damage per auto attack from the bear, but more importantly, it's the extra hits you get because the deuce is slowed in the laning phase. You won't be able to pressure nearly as hard at these early waves, which is really when Lone Druid shines in this matchup. And we're feeling that presence of Yapso once again. Fissure block up the middle, Fissure block on the bottom lane. This is allowing Zaya to continuously keep the sticky napalms up on the Legion. Obviously, she's got to press the attack to break free. Yep. Expect Zaya to start back landing once he gets a couple more levels in Firefly. You drag the creeps over to the neutral camps and you just out farm the LC. It's not a lane you really pressure and once LC's got some Quelling Blade, wand stacks, there's just not much you can do. Does he have to wait for the second uh, set of wards before he can do that? Just mainly because you, you need to have that vision, right, on the shrine. We learned our lesson earlier today. Yeah. We'll see. Shackles, I, Nisha. As War cries, Immersion, no, nothing more to give, especially when they're Fatal Bonded together. Yep. And you talk about spread damage, you add the Sven's Cleave to the AoE spread of the Warlock Bonds. This is a dangerous combination. And they have a Dusa to fall back on as well. Gambit already slightly ahead in all of their lanes. This is the kind of game they need to get going here. They need a laning phase advantage to win the game. That's probably the first vision we've seen come from Yamsaw, which hasn't locked out to Hark and given free damage in for mid one. But the Druid's still having a good time as far as CS goes, so that's that's okay. But there's not a heavy amount of pressure on to mid one. It's a relatively static game this far. I like that Secret's keeping these two heroes up top. Yeah, Yapsor could come up here, but it's really just not going to help them secure the lane. He's much more valuable as this roaming presence. Yeah. Like, unless he can get up here and get a proper fissure block on them, it's not going to help. And he is starting his rotation now. Yep. As Nisha and Puppy, they're only harassing for the moment. Like, Fatal Bonds has already been burnt. That's not for the likes of so all Immersion can do is try and stay in the face of Zven, but... Yep. Like, check, check out bottom, though. That's the big disparity, and that's why Zai is already moving to back lane here. It's necessary. You just cannot lane against this Legion Commander who's getting every CS and deny. Just farm too much base Oh, damage. not again, oh, not no. again! It's close. We can't have two couriers die within four minutes. That's just that's just cruel. Denied. 
And the courier kill is the reason Secret's still ahead in this he's, game, even he's though they're losing their lanes. Uh, no, no. He, he cannot close the distance, no matter how much we think he already has an Aghanim Scepter. So we got a TP coming into bottom shrine. Rasta trying to pursue Zai. There's a work. Over Great fissure right. block. This should be the first blood, even with the Burrow Strike up. Puppy already hit immersion. Yeah, this is huge, though. The Bat Rider has the bottled haste. Remember, Secret opened with this hero. The reason, like, when, when Secret were first doing Lone Druid Morph the other day, they were last banning Bat in that opening phase. This time, Gambit steals their play, but they don't ban that critical hero that obviously Secret feel is this hard counter to this. To the strategy. Mm -hmm. And Zai's having a good time thus far. He bottles the haze. That's big. You gotta be careful mid. Oh, can I have st stop having couriers flying over the top of heroes? This is getting very nerve-wracking. But you'll do still do his creep skip out. Items arrive while Shaman's preparing for some kind oh of engagement in mid. Again! Oh my god. It's not even five minutes. That's two courier deaths. The money kicking in and they'll battle for the runes as well. The pressure is being applied towards mid one. FNG with his rotation. Mid one is now totally out of mana. Support won't rotate over as Puppy and Nisha having their own little battle with immersion. But mid one, how much more has he got? The Fisher to Hark's Bear. It can attack. Once more will do it. Yapso wants to create some space with a follow up stun. He'll get it. Mid one's back under the tower. The bear can't get close enough. The Shackles had to change targets over towards Zai. But now Gambit have gone in way too deep. The Savage Roar can at least send Yapso back a little bit further. But they don't get the kill, Gambit. They needed mid one to die. And they will free up some space, though. The Catapult Wave is up. You can try and get some damage off on this tower. But so far, so good, though. You still look at the net worths, the last hits. Morph is having a free game. LC having a free game. You're off to a good start. And you do have a method of cleanse. It's so important against the Warlock. You cannot be in a scenario where all of these heroes get fatal bonded against the... Yeah, it's just too much regiment. You have the Deucey, you have the Sven. And remember, the downside of having two cores that both rely on Ancients and jungle farming to accelerate is that only one of them can afford to have a bad game. So far, both the Secret's core is off to a good start. But we'll see how Gambit looked to transition as this laning phase comes to a close. Bottom lane is there active. It's uh, challenging, though, underneath Firefly, especially when you've already got a sticky Napalm stack on you. But it's Secret is trying to make the most of this Invis rune. Obviously, Gambit know about it. There was a contest for it. But what does he make happen with this? If he can help Nisha find a kill, but can, you can't get it on the two heroes who can jump to the other side of the rock wall. Be a Burrow Strike or be a Waveform. Unless you can bait one of these out. Yamsaw's waiting for it. Two heroes together. There's your first Burrow Strike. Fatal. Fisher and the follow hit with the Fatal Bonds connecting them. They cannot see Immersion, so they go for Afro instead. Here comes your Storm Hammer. They have the damage output. Keep beating into Afro. SK's dropping lowers. We'll have a quick pause coming in from the Morphling. He's finished his Waveform. He's a little bit further back. Maybe trying to morph and pause at the same time, but sorry, go. We'll keep moving. Yeah, well done. I mean, it's not feasible that you're really going to be able to kill this morphling in the top lane. And really, Secret might struggle with that throughout this game. Not much lockdown outside of the bat lasso. Obviously, you've got the shaker as well, but morph is excellent against heroes like Warlock. They want to sit in the back lines, cast their spells safely. Morph, one of the highest reach carries in Dota 2, can blow him up easily with that shotgun in the event that is the build he goes for. I would assume so yeah. in a game like this. Definitely feel like it. And that's the way we want to see Gambit play. Like, have these aggressive style like items that let you gain that momentum and play Gambit Dota. Don't yeah. play anyone else's Dota, because that's what Secret is so good at, dragging you into their style of game. And you already see Poppy and Nisha just continuing to stem the bleeding up top. It's been a two on three, yet the CS between the two cores is about even. Secret still with a slight gold lead in this game. Really all on the back of Yapsor's two courier kills. It's just another example of Secret, like the creativity similar to Liquid back at TI7. They find different ways, not just to win games, but to find advantages. Mm -hmm. You can't lane anywhere as the Shaker. You weren't successfully able to rotate. So find that little bit of gold where you can. Do they like this? Trouble. Overwhelming odds won't let them close the distance. Zai trying to play the cliff side, and he's got Yamsaw right behind him, but the duel will begin. Yamsaw needs to land these stuns and keep the keep the control up to waste the duel time, which they're able to do so. I don't think he saves Zai, however. He'll try and make a break for the hill, but he will not get there. But no dual damage in for Gambit, but it is their first kill on the board. You're happy, but the support disparity. Look at the levels on the supports right now. Puppy at level five already. Immersion still just level three. This is what happens when you're in a duel versus a tri lane. No sandstorm now. Yep. Fire strikes available, however. He'll go up the hill and just an easy TP away to safety. Puppy back. will check just in case. Yep. Look at this. Mid one already into the jungle. Has that maxed out split shot. 
Expect to see a secret support. Maybe look to sit middle for just a little bit. Drums finished on the Batrider. Got to remember what all that money goes into. And with the drums, is that enough to initiate? I suppose when you go to Dire Observer Ward watching that top lane, they realize how far the Morphling is. Can you still get a kill on the Morph through oh, this? for sure. You just need the Batrider. And that's why Zai is here. Got the drums active. Looking oh. to make the play. Start with the Ziggy Napalm. Firefly up. Is there a lasso to begin with? They'll have to the chain morph. the stuns. Man, without the strength morph. Now he'll get the life back thanks to the sick charges. Rotation in. Don't want to get a little too aggressive, but there are no bigger control yep. factors left for Team that Secret. An unconventional or rare mistake, really, from Nisha. Just throwing out the stun. He just had to fake cast it, force the waveform. Lasso would have landed there. A sure kill had he still had that spell active. Well played, though. By uh, Gambit's Morphling. And it feels FNG fun for a, I, if I saw correct, it's a Mask of Madness in for the Lone Druid, uh, who's going to be building up fast movement speed and uh, attack speed onto that bear. Just anything to try and nail down Team Secret as he looks for the 10-minute bounty runes too. Yeah. And interesting to know, yeah, I was, did a double take for a second, but it was actually Dahak playing the Lone Druid middle. Dyer's Afo Ninja on the Morph attack. offlane. I typically don't see them swap lanes, so... Just demonstrating their learning as this event goes on. 3k gold lead though for Secret, and yep. it's really just all on the backs of the fact that their cores farm faster with the level of gold they've acquired. Gambit, you got the Mask of Madness now in the Lone Druid, immediately the Glyph comes out though. Yep. And really, the, the fact that this mid tower is full health is worrisome if you're a Gambit supporter. If this was a Secret Lone Druid, they've almost certainly rotated towards this tower already, but thus far Gambit really haven't even made a movement for a tower. And we talked about it. Secret, the longer this game goes, the better off they'll be and the more comfortable they'll be. It kind of feels like very odd, right? Because Lone Druid pushes once a kill happens. The fact they didn't kill mid one in the mid lane may still be punishing Gambit as far as the momentum goes. But do you still feel like it's better for teams to going late game when we've seen the power of the Morphling, we've seen the pushing strength that comes in from a Lone Druid who doesn't cap at six items, he caps at 12? Sure, but it's just... It's just not realistic. It sounds cool. It's cute. You know, we might get that legendary three hour game where that becomes a, a problem. But realistically, Secret will outscale, if not just because of their core, is the fact that they have a Warlock and an Earthshaker, two of the better scaling supports in Dota 2 right now. Interesting maneuver from FNG. I thought he was going to move up higher to try and get the catch on ES after he used yeah. all of his stuns. There were double TPs coming down to make the most of that. But now Dahak's forced off mid lane, getting himself tethered yeah. to his bear. And, and that's the problem. You think Spirit Link's great. It gives the Lone Druid some survivability. But if you can get that... Oh god, Zai's coming in. There's a Savage draw. Not using it on the bear, however. So now Zai keeping the movement speed up. The duel is going out on bottom lane. As Yap saw, well, he won't get the bonus damage, but he'll give his life. You're okay with that. You're still just keeping your towers alive. That's the key. We haven't seen mid one in a while. That's because he's just continued to farm. Moving over towards the Ancients is Nisha. He's doing the same. Both these cores Radiance accelerating rapidly. And Puppy's Puppy. enabling it. Just yep. bring on the mass stacks, camp stacks. It's already five for Puppy. He's under attack. Yeah, he's and Zven's doing his own stacks on bottom. Uh, and the spell that's scary in this game as well from the Warlock is the upheaval. There's, Lone Druid doesn't itemize for BKB early on. You cannot fight. You cannot flee once yep. the upheaval's channeled long enough. Phase boots up on the bear. We can expect them to go for the Radiance build. They do get the bottom tower as well, thanks to the Rasta Ward. So, a little bit going for Gambit now. Careful immersion. <laughs> All three of those swings from Nisha got some cleave. And he'll uh, have to back up a little bit. But the mass open was, as you say, like committed. Tier 1 tower is gone. That is the first Tier 1 tower of the game that's fallen. But does Team Seek care that much? Obviously, like, you could just ward up to defend these farming areas. And you're seeing, like, max cleave, max split shot. Like, this you said it right, like Secret and Secret just playing for the late game without having to have Midas. Gambit's using Secret's heroes, but they're not copying the playstyle. They are not playing with that same tempo. And Secret are perfectly content defensively warding. You can even see Puppy placing a sentry just to defend these ancients. They understand the game state they're in. They just want to keep this game going, preserve the status quo. They don't need kills, they don't need fights. They just want to keep farming. And Nice uh, effectiveness from Yamp. So every single lane has felt his presence, but most recently he's just on the bottom lane. And this is something that Secret's always been great at. Uh, I think, like, yeah, you, you were describing it best where they don't really have a four and a five or they don't have a five at all. And Yamp, so giving him this kind of space gives him that initiation item. I like the way he tweaks his build as well when he plays Shaker. Like this game, you're going Soul Ring, extra points in the Fissure instead of uh, maxing out Aftershock first, just because he's not really 
looking to get that early blink. There isn't enough activity for that to be a possibility. Just no tower gold either. You can also see the advantage. Secret scores have the ability to farm jungle very efficiently. Gambit, not really that same luxury. Sure, Lone Druid can do it now, but remember, mid one has been in the jungle since, what, six minutes? Yep. Afo, um, or rather, Dahak is just now getting to a point where he can match that speed. Good fear. Will not secure the rune. It spawns bottom, but yeah, mid one yet to even cross the river. Yeah, very confident, and he'll actually be closing on a Manta style around the 17 minute mark. Good, very good timing. I love how he never went south either, and the, the reason why he actually ventured north was because, and I'm going to correct myself before, the two tier one towers being down. Um, he was able to just push that lean back out again because it built up. <laughs> Masso on the bear. Well, this is an easy 300 if you can claim him as Dahak tries to get back. Masso was trapping up the Deucer. The bear goes into the fight. Rock being dropped down. The bear's already died now as FNG with Ziggy Napalm stacks up on top of him. They'll break him free. With press the attack as Team Secret. Oh, and huge fail boss. Ones. They just need that extra damage to come in and merge and oh stack with the God, front the line. Snake. The snake just does so much work. The Hawk still wants to retreat back out, but he's tethered to the bear. You'll have another sun up in a second. Oh as the Hawk, this bear, he'll die. Giving the feedback damage for both the death and the fatal bonds. Are they still looking to fight? Afro having to turn into Nisha to get that AoE stun, but they're gonna burn through the tier one tower, Team Secret. Yep. This is why Warlock has been banned throughout the like the later points of this tournament. And you gotta question just again the Gambit playstyle here. Secrets had their goat for some time. It feels like they played differently in comparison to what they did yesterday against Liquid, against Vici. Teams you could argue on the same tier as Secret, but there was so much more aggression, so much more confidence it felt like Gambit was playing with, whereas yeah. here. They're just kind of sitting back, throw out their spells, but immediately back off. Puppy's there. You can see the power of the Fatal Bonds with the massive amount of spread damage Secret possessed. The Firefly, that snake just completely turned the fight. Yeah. And that's not even counting the cleave damage, the split shot. God forbid the Absor finishes this Blink Dagger anytime soon. And also, I question Afterlife. He goes to this drums first, but wouldn't a Blink have been a far better usage of his advantage? They weren't able to make any of these aggressive moves because they don't possess any initiation what? until one of these heroes have Blink. Well, it's funny, like, they still got the duel, but then you actually question the, uh, the burst damage. Where does yeah. that come? Like, like, he's had two duels, unable to get the victories because they can't move on to their next target straight and, away. And Yapsor now has his to match the Legion Commander. Size coming in. He has no detection, but he'll just start burning a line around the tower. Protect mid one, they want to add the pressure. Still don't have rock up. Sentry will planted under the tower, and it's just time to get out of here. Yeah, you can see, like, Secret, this is... They're, they're spiking, right? How do you team fight through them when mid one's just planting himself in between his enemies and well, his back line? Shaman, gonna drop the mass serpent wards as he holds Puppy in position. Now, this is a good kill. Mid one's trying to break him free. Oh. The Shackle actually cancels it. There was nothing in range to make him do this. That's going to be free 300 gold going the way of Dusa if he moves over his Manta Illusions towards those wards, exactly what he chooses to do. Unfortunate. Once again for Gambit, and it just feels like a slow but sure move by Secret, who just constantly grow their lead without even needing to make any sort of play. Medusa already 2,000 of gold to the Morphling, and I don't think Gambit want to do anything until they finish a Radiance. It feels like a very predictable movie at the moment. Like, I, I'm, I'm waiting for the punchline, the, the, the sharp twist to hit from Gambit where things come online, but every part of this plot makes you feel yeah, like you know the next chapter. It, it's possible. It's just that when you're playing this Lone Druid, the reason I praise this hero, I think it's so good, is because of its power in the mid game. Against Warlock, against Bat, again, you're not a BKB buyer. You need all of these build-up items first, the Radiance, notably. Mm -hmm. It's not going to do anything in terms of keeping yourself alive if you catch these spells. Yep. You do have uh, the Lincoln Sphere coming up on the Morphling, so that's at least one way to try and counter the initiation that comes in from Batrider, but he's gone such high movement well, where's speed. Where's the damage? That is a very good question. You already know you have these massive tanks in the front line with the Warlock behind them, with the counter initiation of Yapsor. How are you going to kill Medusa right now? Yep. He's just gonna go straight for the Scotty, doubling down on oh, that survivability. Side. We have a lasso. Lassoing on the bottom lane, dragging back FNG. Saw him moving down for that one. And FNG now on the retreat back out. BKB from Sven. He'll have that one. The duel tries to create some space. Where's the extra support? The rock drops from Puppy. Have they got the kill yet? Kabani with that blink epicenter. It's nice. the first reveal of that, the SK, and they're gonna make it work. The Batrider and Warlock will die. And the cost is FNG. Now Afro wants to go for more, but the revenge is up. Link is fear, buying him some time. He's oh a straight ball, but the chain! Control! Yaps are at the Echo Slam, ready to go! 
There's not much that the heart can do here to help out anymore with the bear. So just run it away. You can see Secret a little sloppy there. Puppy and Zai getting a bit too aggressive, getting distracted by that Rasta. But Secret's cores, they're just so strong. So long as they get their spells um, off, they're going to be just fine. And he whoa. got attacked. His blink was After off cooldown. And now he's going to get caught. Afterlife, maybe there's some extra help. Press the attack, still underneath the sentry ward, so Immersion's well attacked, and Puppy's Rock, it's arrived too. The Savage Roll forces mid one a little bit further back, and this Blink needs to come, but the TP is also in the way from Batrider, using the Golem. Zai gets himself to the front line to keep the battle going. FNG's already been brought down to Hark, the Fizz just done off course it's there. Yapsos always got the sun, always got the timing, and giving a double kill to this Ven, increasing yeah. that net worth. Dude, I love that from Puppy as well. Microing his Golem, keeping it as this bully, prevents the Legion Commander from fleeing right away, which distracts the Lone Druid. He wants to try and help out his ally, but then there's the TP, the bots onto the Golem. How are you supposed to deal with that? Definitely not something they expected. Yeah, you know? that's, that's almost the old school stuff. Remember like when we had the Tinkers and then use the yeah. Beastmaster Hawks and, and Puppy's like, you know what? I got one thing. I got one thing that's already down that can work for you. Yep, and I love Nisha's build here. Blitz said it himself. No one likes to buy BKB, but immediately he picks one up pre-20 minutes. And you can see there, there's no way to kill this hero. You don't want to target Medusa. You can't go for Nisha. Who do you actually want to kill? I don't see Secret making another play where both their squishies just find themselves out of position. Oh, we'll get to watch it again. So the Blink Dagger gets hit, so it gets put on cooldown, and Yapsaw yep. begins all of this. And the funny thing is he's practically the one who ends it. Yep. And meanwhile, Puppy was pushing that bottom lane as well that entire time. Getting full usage out of his hero even while he's dead. Mid one, yeah sure, he's getting war trapped, but Nisha's still in the area. He was just farming, same pattern, ensuring that he's around his teammates. You don't want to let Gambit play that style EG got away with in the previous series. Yep, get comfortable, change something. <laughs> Lean to the left, not to the right. And 4k gold now. Mid one's advantage on the rest of the game. And that looks about right on the numbers. Team Secret, very much in control of this game. But Gambit, as you said, like they have some things they can work with, but when these pickoffs continue, FNG tries to TP out, but Zai has a double damage rune as well. Anisha's here, maybe looking to get aggressive. And just the trouble is, whenever I watch teams play against Secret, you look at their stats in the late game. They're, they have a Medusa, they've got a Sven, and they might have a Sand King kill. Do they have detection? Of they course have they a Sentry, do. but Emotion's getting the distance. Sparrow Strike. This is the upside of the SK. He's yeah. a very maneuverable hero. Yeah, just, I, if I'm going to beat Team Secret, you know, OG, they tried one style. We're going to try and blitz you down, take these towers very early on. Gambit, you know, Lincoln's on the morph, a bunch of build up on the Lone Druid. Your timing that you're going for is on this E blade, but by that point, like, what, how much of the map are you gonna are you gonna see to secret? Mm -hmm. Blink dagger active on Sven. I like that he went for that before the AC. He doesn't need any more survivability now. They're looking to just hunt. You've got a Scotty up on the Medusa. It's time to just start barreling down lanes as five. That's exactly what Secret looked to do. Yep. They've got all their ultimates active. They've got all the jump initiation they want. They just need the front line to bait something in. Maybe they think about killing off to Hark, and they're like, okay, he's behind. He has to be behind because he stuns the bear. Nisha really would have preferred to get the hero. Now Yapsaw, he'll the arrive upheaval. with the fissure and the upheaval. The rock can't get out of keeps it. the stun, and to Hark, he cannot move away. He's here with his bear, and he'll have to die with his bear. Fatally, fatally bonded towards it. The Scotty makes difficulty to get away, but the Burrow Strike Immersion can create the distance. Nothing else is fatally bonded. So Nisha, you're under T4 bloody town. Killing two heroes from Gambit. They haven't even taken tier twos. And more, like, again, what, what's Alpha Ninja supposed to do? He has a Lincolns. You There's can't no, do anything. It's, it's worthless in, in fact, comparison even to what got, Secret's acquired. Even once he's got E-Blade, doesn't feel like he, he can do anything. Like Secret, they don't care what is meant to be your territory. This is, this is a full invasion. And they're going to beat the tier three towers down. We're 23 minutes into this game. Oh, Zai solo killing again. The same story as last time. FNG trying to get the split push out. The tier three tower, it will fall Look at top. least to the rock. Look top on Afo. Yapsaur's got ultimate. Oh, He's waiting God. for the creep wave. If that you creep wave hits, blink in two, one. There it is. Oh, Hit it hard. Nail him down. And dead with no buyback. The tier three tower is gone. Seeker can now either push top, go for Roshan, or basically they can go for a break. Gambit already, don't want to count him out just yet, but 
It looks grim. It looks yes. real grim. <laughs> yes. And if I, I'm looking at the tea leaves, I see the grim. And I, uh, I'd love to see them just re regroup. You know, use this last bit of this game before Secret comes down to kill your throne as an opportunity to like make a play, make yep. a smoke move. I have yet to see Gambit. Oh, here they go again. There's FNG no caught out, thinking about helping out with the press. FNG can move into the trees in a way. Dude, they don't even have mid one. He's still farming the triple camp by bottom <laughs> shrine. Sure. He needs his butterfly. This, th these things are expensive. Team Secret still need to win a TI to have that level the of thing, money. It, the thing is, if you're going to beat Secret, you got to you gotta play to beat them, for lack of better phrasing. You, you can't just sit on your heels. I understand that it's difficult to, to do so, but you can't just do nothing. Yep. You cannot hit 10 minutes with a lone druid mid and yep. deal zero damage to the enemy tower. What was the old phrase? Play to win, don't play to survive. Don't play not to lose. Not to lose. It's just the easiest way to lose. And if you ask any of the players that have been in multiple TIs, they'll all say the same thing. It feels like each time there's one or one to three teams just playing regular and everyone else playing worse. <laughs> yep. Gambit, every time they go up against Secret, it feels like that same scenario. This is just not the same team I saw yesterday. Secret, they walk up the high ground. There's only one hero in base <laughs> and they're already dealing building damage. There's no glyph active. I was waiting for that camera shot just, just, to, be, just, just to be on mid one where he's There's right no clicked once he can take his hands off the keyboard because there is no defense being mounted. They're happy to lose it. The top lane was pressured in. The Harkin immersion are there, and they're hoping someone's going to try and contest it, and it is Zai. Oof. Savage roared away, TPs are coming over towards the shrine. How fast can you move? Yaps or Fissure. It only catches a bear. Immersion's in the tree line too. They'll see him with that with that flying vision. Nisha wants a better target. Here they jump in. Legion Commander instantly pushed back by the flame break. And maybe you do have the control to bring down Lone Druid. FNG wants to fight. Putting down the mass serpent wards. You actually burn the Echo Slam at the very back lines, but it may not matter. Warlock does drop. Here comes your epicenter, but it won't matter if Nisha gets the damage and he can't do it. Two heroes down. Gambit are finally getting themselves to play. In. They go for the sandstorm. They're chasing after Yapsaw. He's worth so much money, and he comes out for it. He'll find the kill. We're getting ourselves. Maybe not a great game, but it's still a game. Signs of life for sure. But remember, there was no mid one in the entire engagement. He was still just farming. That was a full four on five. Secret still with the confidence. Pursue. They're moving so you quick for Roshan. Get, you need to get it right now, Gambit. This is the time to capitalize. You. Secret made an error. You need to push. You need to get something out of this. Can they force buybacks? Don't get clapped by Roshan. Everyone's in there. Here comes the Deucer Illusion. It'll have a quick little peek. 50%. Here comes the real mid one. Stone Gaze available. The Mystic Snake will trigger on the Lincoln Sphere so he doesn't get the bounce through. Zai as well with the Flying Vision to Hark. He's TPing out underneath them, but they have no stun available. Lasso was on cooldown. So Gambit will escape, but it feels like they've done the hard work for Team Secret. And Secret, yeah, they're going in for Roshan now. Mid one will do it. He's closing in on the butterfly as well. Four staff on the bat. Secret's team fight and pick off is oh. superior at the moment. Morphling shows on bottom lane. They realize, you know what, this yep. would have worked, but we, we're just too slow. Yep. And Secret, Secret, they're going to give you a one. I don't think they give you another. They're going to collect the Sages and immediately mobilize towards top. He's going underneath the wards. If this is a blinking attempt, yeah, look at Nisha. He's waiting. It's all right, Afro, you want to go for this one? Yeah, so he blinks in, looks for the steal, and Roshan killed by Radiant. Nisha will snatch the Aegis, the Immortal, but at least the kill of Roshan is being denied. It'll cost the Legion Commander his life. He cannot escape from this. Way too much damage, and not worth the one charges. They will afford the Blade Mail, but no buyback on the Legion. It's curious, will they just barrel down for more? In fact, they do. They just know go Gambit's not in base. Uh, you, you can, can you go, go for, for bottom racks. You can go for bottom racks. It is okay. exposed. Glyph is available. The creep waves arrived, so yeah, the backdoor regen's turned off. There's e blades arrived for Morphling, so the shotgun has to hit hard. But who can he hit? He doesn't want mid one. Yeah. Butterfly coming out of the career right now. Mid one nigh indestructible. Oh, blink away. Zai. Cutting down the tree line, taking away immersion's hiding spot. They're not even here with either core. They're just gonna let this second racks fall. And Secret, they're going to get back in plenty of time to defend their base. This does seem smart, though, from Gambit. If they take a fight here, it could just end horrendously. Unless FNG, you know what, maybe he's the expendable one. Going with a shotgun, they burn the Aegis Immortal. FNG gets to follow up Shackles, instantly cancelled by Yapsaw. FNG will die unless it's Savage Raw. No, it cannot create enough space, but Nisha, still under the Mass Serpent was The Fissure has actually blocked him in. He's stuck up on the high ground, but the rest of Gambit can't get close enough to continue the fight. Especially now they're fatally bonded up. You do not want to jump. Should the split push is keeping the gold lead about even, but Secret winning the base damage trade for sure. Another Rax kill, they're gonna get the bottom shrine. They still have Aegis. 
you can split push all you want, Gambit, but at some point, you're gonna have to fight Secret, and it looks like top racks will be your last stand. Will it be enough is the question. Like, I, I just don't know how you kill how you kill mid one. So this is the snatch. The jump in, yep, yep. so couldn't get the initial hit. He and, didn't have Echo Slam, so that wasn't yeah. the initial attack. Nisha also stunning the Roche, but it gets Lincoln's off. Uh, if he goes, if he gets the stun on the LC, they're gonna get the Roche kill and the follow-up. At least they do get the Aegis, which means they'll have the ability to end this game a bit faster. Yep. Just need one more five on five. Gambit, you've got methods of removing the fatal bonds, you got a bit more survivability, but how do you deal with this Bat Rider? If he finds the Legion Commander, there's no cleanse, there's no real save, he'll certainly go down. Yeah. Puppy's always ready with that golem to counter initiate. And Zai is very willing to go deep with a four staff. He's already got insane movement speed, so the drag back's a long way out of position, making it impossible for the rest of Gambit to get closer. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's it's rough. We we knew this was rough after the first like five ten minutes. And the secret. team secret take it to a whole new level. And yeah, they're not joking around anymore. They're gonna smoke up. Zai actually gonna pop this. What a player! Ooh, jumps in. What a player! Gambit were hoping for initiation, and they get nothing. Apart from the crowd to scream. Yep, and they've done their job. Look at bottom lane, look at mid lane. They're pushed enough to know that, yeah, sure, you can get these bounty runes, Gambit. We don't care about bottom lane. Go push if you'd like. We're gonna just continue, kill this top shrine, and barrel down for that finishing racks. And I think, Gambit, you please get back to base before they enter your high ground. <laughs> Just once, we need, we need to engage here. You, you can fight against Megas, right? You've got to do so. Wait, no, that's on Team Secret. Hmm. How do you battle this? Gambit needs an answer, and they need it now. Lone Druid gets the tome. Maybe that'll give him yeah. something to fight with here, but... Here comes Team Secret. You must answer now, Gambit. You can't be up, Megad. Zai's looking for the hunt once more, hoping for a jump. The bear will come forward. Attacking, mid one. The bear stunned up. Barrow Strike from Immersion well off the target. The Hawk's bear already copping 50% of his life. You'll have to send it back to try and regen before the next push comes from Secret. I just... Where's the damage to kill Deuce to Toby? He's just standing in the front line. You throw out the E-Blade, it just tickles. You know, that actually helps him mainly because he doesn't attack. <laughs> that's, that's the one upside from it. But once again, Zai blinking. Last time we got the big one. Train him together with the rock drop. They just create so much space. And Nisha in the back lines. He'll kill up the Legion Commander. Legion was stunned for the entire death. The killing the bear is efficient. Single law. The top tier three tower will fall. A quick ward trap quickly come back out of it as well. FNG getting the shackles. Here comes Immersion. In with the epicenter. Into the back lines. But as quickly as he initiates, he dies. You get the duel off Dude. with the blade mount. But he does no damage. The echo slam is there. This is just the icing on the cake. GG is called Team Secret. Dominating Gambit again. This stage has just been smacked down Saturday. I think superior late game, superior team fight, you can see. Just outplaying Gambit. The lasso comes out. Nisha immediately follow up initiates on the Legion Commander to ensure there's no cleanse available. So now there's two kills instead of one. They both buy back. But it's irrelevant. Immersion stuns forward, nice epi, sure. But Nisha's three 